Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Klein. I'm the, I'm the Chief Information Officer here in School District 21. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about filtering. I want you to understand why we filter, what we filter, and a little bit about how we filter. We know that filtering can be frustrating for students and for staff members too when it prevents us from accessing a site that we need as a resource to support our learning. At the same time, we know that there's people in our community and more broadly who have concerns about things that are available on the internet. We try to balance both of those and make as much available as possible to support our students and their learning. Filtering initially came about in schools primarily as a result of legislation in Washington, D.C. In 2001, the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act was passed, and this required schools receiving federal funds to have a filter in place. While a lot of filtering decisions were left up to the individual schools themselves, the filter is required. At that time, given the level of sophistication of technology and filtering, teachers and students in School District 21 were filtered, as they would be for many years to come. Additionally, over the years, as things like video and YouTube specifically arose on the internet, one of the important things that our filter helped us do was manage bandwidth. We're very lucky that in recent years, we've been able to significantly increase the amount of bandwidth or the amount of internet traffic that School District 21 can handle. And as a result of that, we've been able to shift and start taking advantage of resources like YouTube that we previously were not able to take advantage of. Part of this shift occurred a few years ago when we shifted to differentiated filtering. With differentiated filtering, teachers and students started to receive different filtering permissions. That continued up until now, and in more recent times, this past year with the uh, deployment of the Chromebooks to our middle school students, we enhanced that differentiated filtering by separating out the filter policies among teachers, middle school students, and elementary stu school students. We continue that today with our move to Securely, where we take advantage of Securely's policy structures that are tightly integrated with Google Apps for Education. And we continue to filter by teachers or staff, middle school students, and by elementary school students. Within any major filtering product, filtering can be done by category, uh, and th that is how the filter categorizes websites which is typically done using databases and algorithms, as well as by group, like the aforementioned teachers, middle school students, and elementary school student groups that we have. There are not a lot of sites that we actually block by hand. Rather, we let the categorization of the filter do the majority of the blocking that is done. But there are two kinds of sites in particular that we do block by hand, and we want to make sure that our middle school students in particular understand what those are. The first are proxy sites. Proxy sites have an important place in a world where we value free speech and the exchange of information. There are some places in the world, whole countries even, where the internet is filtered at the national level. In those places, proxy sites are important ways for people to get information from outside and to share what's going on in the world. Proxy sites block some of the filtering capabilities. Proxy sites are also inherently risky for private networks. They allow things to come onto those networks that you wouldn't necessarily want on them. And as a result, proxy sites in public education, other governmental agencies, or in places like financial institutions or hospitals or medical facilities are not very safe from a network security perspective. Additionally, we want our students to understand that going around filters is not good digital citizenship in most cases. Now, of course, we did mention there are examples that that's probably not true depending on one's values in this world, but here, we want students to be able to understand the nuance of that. Nevertheless, 
We block proxy sites and we'll continue to work with our students to make sure that sites that are needed for their learning uh, are available for them and that students understand uh, those key elements of digital citizenship as they're growing up. The other category of sites that we block in significant numbers by hand are sites with pirated, copyrighted materials. So we have seen many instances of students accessing sites with movies, music, television shows, even books that are not on those sites with the permission of the authors and or publishers. And while it doesn't seem harmful, to access materials from a movie company or a music industry where the studios are making millions and millions of dollars, the truth is that both publishers and authors of those materials have rights related to copyright. And it's important that those rights are protected so that they can earn money off the original materials that they've produced and continue to produce such materials. Additionally, we have to protect both our students and their families as well as the school district in ensuring that we're doing everything we can to prevent pirated materials from being used and shared on our network and on our devices. So it's in everybody's best interest from the publishers and authors to our students, their families, and the school district that we're not accessing those copyrighted materials illegally. Philosophically, we've really shifted to one in which we want students to be able to access as many of the world's resources as possible. We want them to be able to do it safely. We want them to be supervised. And one of the things the filter does is help provide that supervision so that we can understand what our students are doing and help them make good choices while they're growing up so that when they're on their own, they're continuing to make good choices that will help them out. And we're really excited about being able to ensure that more and more resources from around the world are available to our students to learn from and through which our students can share their learning back with the rest of the world.